Uh, hello. I, I love that little tune that gets us I in. Hello, I friends. Think. Welcome I to Hope it. and Anchor. I'm Trey. Welcome Eunice and Thelma and Jenny. And welcome everybody watching out there in the world on social media. Welcome to Hope and Anchor. We're a new chat show. Really, we think of ourselves as a virtual pub table where friends and strangers get together and talk about life and the spirituality connecting us all. So welcome. Uh, just to say again, it's not just the four of us on screen. It's all y'all on social media. Wherever you are, we want you to engage, to send in your questions, to comment in the comment section. And let's get it started. Every week in our first round of drinks, we like to ask an open, a sort of a, a sort of a, a icebreaker question. And the question for today, we're talking about faith and change. And today the question is, who is someone who's inspired you to seek change? Someone in your personal life, a public figure, who's inspired you to seek change in the world, in your faith, in yourself. Who's inspired you and what have they inspired you to do? So let us know. Pop that in the chat. We'd love to hear from you who's inspired you to seek change. What about y'all in the studio? Eunice, Thelma, Rev Jen. Uh, <laughs> who's inspired you to seek change? Well, for me, uh, it's a, a, a semi-political figure. Her name is Susan B. Anthony from the great state of Tennessee in the good old American U.S. In, in United States of America. USA. Thank you. That's the <laughs> word I'm looking for. <laughs> Susan B. Anthony was an incredible woman. Uh, just before America was about to allow women to vote, um, there was one state that hadn't voted yet and it was it was tied and whatever Tennessee would vote uh, would either swing swing it either way and Susan B. Anthony her son was a senate member and wasn't going to vote for it but she sat him down the night before the vote and just lectured him <laughs> all night <laughs> and the next morning he went to vote and Tennessee um, passed the vote by one vote Oh, wow. and it was, I know, and it was all because of Susan oh, B. Anthony. So she inspires me to like if I if if I want change, like keep talking about it until it mm. gets done. Here's Berenice, <laughs> Berenice saying, "When I was young, it was Nelson Mandela. Now it's Jesus. Amen, wow. amen." Beautiful. What about what about others? A Ch Chine McDonald from last oh, interview. Oh, oh that is amazing. <laughs> Eunice, Thelma, what about y'all? Who inspires you? So uh, currently, go for it, Thelma. Jump Jesus. in. So currently, um, I've got a part-time job at university and I'm working at a study centre and I'm working with young, very young children teaching them maths. And one thing I've realised is every time I teach them numbers, the first question they ask me is, why? Why is that one? <laughs> and why is that two? And why does one come after two? And why does, and it's, it's just so many questions about why. And I've been thinking about it recently and it's really inspiring me to question the things we've always seen as normal and to really ask yourself, why do we accept the things we do and why is the world the way it is? So they've really challenged me to see change in everything and to actually have purpose. Like they're the most purposeful human beings I've ever mm. met because if you don't explain a reason why, they're just not going to do it. Like one of I my love, friends, my kids told me, I'm I not doing that. the maths because I don't get it. I don't know why we do it, so I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Inspiring. I love, that. I love that. I love that I love challenge, that. yeah. I love that too. I, Some, someone wrote in, my Nana, I think grandparents are yeah. often oh, the people yeah. who speak to us to inspire us and change. So I think that was Andrew Dye saying his Nana. So wonderful. Eunice, you wanted yeah. to get in. Who's inspi who inspired yeah. you to change? Well, I would pick me dad. That's a very Geordie thing to say, isn't it? Me dad. My my father was brought up in poverty. He had hardly anything, but he would give anyone, anyone in need. And he wow. really taught me about God. I, I used to think, um, you know, I, I'm, he made me feel closer to God because he just shone, it just shone from his face. So mm -hmm. often, and I often think of him now and absolutely inspired me. I thought if I can get hold of that vision of God, then that's just fabulous. We've got all kinds of people sort of sharing people who, who they know personally, people in public life who've inspired them. I mean, I think we, we learn to change by watching others, you know, and I think there are all kinds of different ways to learn. So, but being, being role models ourselves, but also having others be role models for us as we learn and stretch and grow in our faith, so important. There's some folks, Chief Steve Chalk inspires uh, Tiz Tizard there. Keep those comments coming in. We'd love to see those. Um, uh, for me, it's um, an old monk from the 20th century called Thomas Merton, who has taught me so much about yes. prayer, but he was also sort of an evangelist for the faith. At the same time, he was a deep contemplative, and he was also an activist for justice and peace. And so in his life, I, I, got, I, I was inspired, but also I think a model for a little old me 100 years later, who's trying to sort of hold all those things together uh, and usually failing. But um, thank God for Thomas Merton, a blessed memory. <laughs> 
Wonderful. Isn't it great? Friends, we'd love to hear more from you. So keep uh, responding to us in the chat. Now we're going to invite to join us at the table, Sarah. Sarah's coming in for In the Street. In the News. In the News. <laughs> in the news. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Hi. But Sarah, you're muted. We can't hear you, which is oh, cool. Classic. How, are you? Oh, it's time How many times have we heard that line? <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's time for In The News. <laughs> Great, so this is the game where you're going to get three headlines and you've got to decide which one is genuine and which two are fake news. So we like to have a bit of a laugh here on Hope and Anchor, but you know we like to look at the world and the news through the lens of our Christian faith. And so this week... I've decided to go for a bit of a Welsh theme to the headlines. So Ooh. let's get ready with the first And we want headline. people to pl pl play at oh, home, yeah. so pop your... Pop your, 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 your I, yeah. I need all the help I can get. Not yeah. Yeah. We need help, we need help <laughs> from people at home. All right. This is e it's easy this week, Jenny. Don't worry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't we'll see, uh, roll on, Sarah. Roll Headline on. number one. A grand dragon and egg statue plan is hatched in Bala. Headline number two. The world's largest sand sculpture breaks records in Llandidno. And lastly, number three, new statue honours Wales' first black head teacher. Wow, okay. So if you're playing at home and you're Welsh and you know this answer, Please tell can, me. You can, you can vote. <laughs> <laughs> you can vote. Tell me. Don't say, uh, yeah, let us know in the comments. Don't, don't say, uh, this is the truth. So we want to play the game. So what do you think, those of you who are at home, and those of you who are in the studio, that's a tough one. Well, the, fir the first the first headline for me, I'm 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 got a big Sri Lankan heritage. I'm half Sri Lankan, and I have an uncle Bala, Uncle Bala Chandra. And so when I saw Bala, I was like, Uncle Bala, what's he doing in Wales? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little town. It's North Wales, Jenny. North. Yeah, Wales, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Nothing to do with my uncle. Then it's about a town in North Wales. Right, okay. <laughs> All right. So are you voting for that one? Are you voting for number one, Jen? Oh, oh well, oh, maybe. Yeah. All right. oh, in, in memory of Uncle Bala. <laughs> <laughs> what about other folks at home? What do you think? What if other folks in the studio think? I'm going to go for number three, I think. Oh, so, Suze Fishburne sinks the one in London. I can't pronounce that well. Lendedno is a fake. My dad lives there. Not mentioned any giant sandcastles. Oh, that's, a, that's direct, direct testimony. Direct testimony. Yeah. I'm going for three. The first black head there. teacher. I was going to go for three as well. I think it's quite timely. I think, yeah, I think that's true. I think. Nigel Pimlet says three. Number three is correct, time. says Paul Curtis. Number three. Yes. Oh, 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 I think everyone's coming in now. I oh, told you, I told you it was an easy one this week. Oh. Yay. That's right, number three. And I just thought it was really apt that at the start of Black History Month, that there's this statue in the south of Wales, which is honouring Betty Campbell. She was the country's first black head teacher. Amazing. And this is actually the first statue of a real named woman in an open air space in Wales. Hallelujah. How amazing is that? Wow. Wonderful. Praise God. Yeah. Wonderful. Wow. That's just great to hear, isn't it? Mm. I love that. I love all these pioneering leaders. And I, I'm reading this book right now, one of the Booker Prize um, winners. And, and Cardiff, actually, Wales, what, 100 years ago, was the epicenter of multiracial reality. I mean, amazingly, I think we sometimes think about this is my stereotype, like things being multi, like very mono, but like Wales was, were, were pioneers in that in, 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 many, in many ways that way. Amazing. Wow. That's great. Well, thank you for, for joining us, Sarah. It's lovely to play with play, play that game with you, whether we call it in the news or something else that Eunice <laughs> wants to call it. The news in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love for you to, um, we'd love to, to hear your headlines. So if you have an idea for a headline true or made up, one from whatever the Gazette or the, 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 the you can pull headlines from your community paper, send them in to us. Uh, you can find, the, find our email address there and send those in. And we'd love to in include your, your in the news uh, suggestions in a future game. Definitely. <laughs> Thanks for playing, guys. See Bye, you Sarah. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. <laughs> Earlier this month, I had the great fortune to talk with Emma Hardy, MP. She's the MP from Kingston upon Hull and Hessel, and uh, Hull West and Hessel. And I love her Instagram header. It says, um, mom of two, social justice campaigner, ex-teacher, Methodist, 
labor MP for Hull, Wes, and Hessel. I, lo I love that combination of things. And we talked about a lot of things, but first we talked about our own spiritual practice and she shared about her own spiritual practice. And I invite you to listen in some of that conversation. Yeah, um, I don't have as much time for spirituality as I would like is in time to sit back and reflect and relax and what I have started doing though is trying to go for a, I know it sounds a bit to go for a swim a bit more often so at the moment I can book out a pool to swim on my own for a time slot because of Covid they're not allowing more than one family group to go at the same time at the pool in London so I can go on my own and be there in the swimming pool and I know it sounds uh, it might sound strange but being there on my own it's very still it's very quiet it's very peaceful and because it's sort of in a basement it's it's almost the acoustics are, are it, it, it almost feels you know I don't know chair you know when you walk in there the acoustics are in a certain way and I find that being in that space and, and I think the of doing when you're just going up and down and um, doing lunch you can kind of gives you time to sort of uh think and reflect and and probably at that point when I'm on my own and I like to go really early about seven in the morning before I start the day mm. and I have that that peaceful start before the day <laughs> takes off. Yeah, I think that's a deeply spiritual practice I think sometimes when we talk when we think about spirituality we think sort of and this this can be like we think open the bible or say a prayer and those things are obviously deeply spiritual but I think there's a spirituality to kind of to ordinary life, I'm a I'm not a swimmer, but I'm a runner. And when I go into the park park path, and app takes about ten minutes, and whatever kicks in the dopamine, the the free drugs from God. But there is something <laughs> beautiful that I and I feel deeply connected to God. And it sounds like a little different for you in the in the pool, but there's something something really connective there. The reason I asked her that question is because I think people who are activists, people who are pushing for change <coughs> often can get burned out and whether you're in politics or other justice seeking things. And I think how important it is for us, all of us, but particularly those who are activists and pushing for change to be centered in God and centered in spiritual practice. And um, I, I love that, con that conversation. Uh, sometimes we have traditional spiritual practices, but God is to be found and God seeks us everywhere. And so I'm curious for y'all at home, let us know where does God encounter you in your ordinary life? And I'm curious around the table here, where do, where do you experience God or where does God encounter you in your ordinary life? For me, really, really loud music and dancing. I love that, you know, when it's really, really loud and you're dancing and you just get out of your head and into your body and something just is transcendent about that. So really, really loud music. Mm. <laughs> I was really struck in the interview, listening to Emma. She, her, her opening line was, I, we, "I don't, I don't have time," and time is such a precious resource. And I reckon that we all feel that that real, real pressure. And that if you if you're a person of faith, it's a real. You can fall into that trap of thinking, "Oh." So and so has got such a better prayer life than me, and they're so much mm. superior. Yeah. But actually, God values whatever you can bring, and maybe it's a little bit of a sign to say, God is pushing you right now to say, um, "You need to find some time for yourself," because that is what spirituality mm. is—is is about putting yourself first. Mm. But most importantly, God values and God honors that small moment of like, "Okay, Lord, I'm brushing my teeth. It's quarter to twelve at night, but I'm here. You got two minutes." <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. That you is got walk, yeah. walk on the dog, walking in the yeah. fells. Someone yeah. else is talking about dancing. I mean, yeah. What about what about others of you? Uh, what Thelma? What about you? Yeah. Um. I used to do this thing where I'd go out and just go to a cafe or something, and then say I'm on a date with God. <laughs> it sounded so cliche. I was oh. single back then, so you know. <laughs> so I would go on a date with God and just like watch the world and watch society. And just, I remember I would always leave and I'd, somebody would catch my eye and I'll just look at them and really see God represented and just the simple day-to-day -day things that they were doing. It was also just a place for prayer for me. So it would push me to pray for other people. So I'll just be sitting in this cafe, eating a carrot cake and just praying for the people who work there or praying for somebody who's reading a book um i don't have as much time to do it now i must be honest but i even do it when i'm on campus and just embracing humanity and using that as a way to connect to god um wow. it's just so wholesome i love that a date with god a date yeah. with god are you are you, still... pay, <laughs> are you are you are you still single are you with someone now 
We can talk about that later. Okay. I was wondering if your relationship had squoze out your your dates with God because God, God still wants to be that. I love that. That's that's another that's another episode of Hope and Anchor. Definitely, time yeah. is love life. <laughs> John is John talked about art. Caroline, uh, I think, talked about um, swimming as well. Julie and digging in the garden. All these places. I mean, walking. You know, I think this is the thing. As you as you said, Jenny, people think that. Um, in order to be spiritual, you have to look a certain way or fit in a certain box. And I think what we're hearing from, from, from y'all and from folks out there is like, God is to be found in every square meter of the creation, uh, yeah. seeking us. So get out there and look for God, whether it's at a table on a date or swimming and keep sending those, those ideas in. We'd love to keep hearing those. I had, I did have a follow-up part of the conversation with Emma where we talked about faith and politics and the intersection of faith and politics. And um, we were both sort of reflecting on how sometimes people want to keep those things apart. People of faith will say sometimes like, oh, we're just supposed to talk about God, not politics. And people who are involved in political life say, oh, we're not supposed to talk about our faith or spirituality or lack thereof. And what Emma was saying was like, actually, these things can go together in really beautiful, faithful and practical ways. So listen in to some of the conversation. Well, they are combined. You know, if we if we believe as as we do that you know people are equal and um you know and, and look at the work that jesus did and when he talked about inequality and when he talked about poverty then then surely with there is a duty on us to try and do what we can to alleviate poverty and injustice and and for some that can be the practical work that many do out in the community but others that can be getting involved in parliament being part of the decision making because otherwise you're you know you're you're always fighting fires and it's like you said fighting fires all the time but stop them occurring in the first place let's get further up you know and 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 deal with some of these issues from the very top if that's what if that's what we you know truly believe then and and everything's political you know mm. every decision everything we you know everything comes back to politics at some point someone has made a political decision you know we were talking just before but issues around the equality act around uh you know, gay marriage. These are these are issues that affect everyone, but they're political decisions. They were made by politicians at some point, and I think mm. that you can't separate that. And in politics, I think you know, your values are depending on obviously your you know your background, but whatever you do in politics, it's values driven, isn't it? And I think so. I, I'd say they're 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 very closely connected in, in my in my opinion but i know it's that because i'm a methodist and a politician <laughs> i love that she went to jesus she said she, her model for this is jesus who critiques the system and and seeks a, a better system uh, i love that and i'm just curious what y'all think and i just want to say um, we are, as people of faith across parties, people who are Labour and Tory and uh, Independent and Green and s and and Lib Dem and, and you know, all, across the spectrum politically, we're all called to change the world for the better. What did y'all think about Emma's comments? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Honestly, Fabulous. wholesome. I, I love what she said about, sorry, <laughs> I love what she said about um, rather than constantly putting fires out, let's be the people that actually stop the fire from happening. I think that's yeah. such a beautiful way to talk about Christians and leadership and the need for us being part of those decisions that are being made so inspirational. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I love that reminder about Jesus. And I, I love that when you're reading the Bible, who J Jesus went to dinner with, he was always going to dinner with people who other people want were excluded and people who were poor and he talked a lot about money didn't he he didn't shy mm. away from really difficult things and i think wherever ever we talk about money then we're talking about politics mm. who's got it who hasn't got it who should have it how do we decide that that's that's at the heart of it all mm. when emma was talking about that importance of action and politics and faith it reminded me there's, there's somewhere in the bible it's towards the end in a book called james which is right at the end if you don't know the bible you want to find it, it's in james chapter two and he talks about faith and actions and basically he says what's the point in having faith if you ain't got no actions yeah. and what's the point mm -hmm. in having actions if you ain't got no faith either and for mm -hmm. me uh, we're, we're people called methodists in this in this chat show and for me that being a methodist one of the fundamental points of being methodist is we call it social change and social action about seeing a problem and thinking there's no point in saying oh i'll just pray for you mm. 
part yeah. of that faith of being what we call Methodist and being a Christian is saying, I see the problem, but I've got to do some of it. I'll, I, will, I, will, I will pray, 100% I will pray because I can't do this without praying, but I've got to, I've got to do some of it. I've got to, I've got to do some with my hands and what, what can I yes. do? Because one yes. person can fundamentally change the world. Ask Malala, ask MLK, <laughs> ask Gandhi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Prayer and protest and political change and praise yeah. of God are all held together for mm. us. I love that. I love that. Thank so you, Tiz, for that. That's thank you for that. That great Tiz is putting that. You can read about other folks who are who say maybe say Amen to this today. Um, yeah. what, what did you that whole thing around justice as not just putting fires out? This is what we're talking about, but also uh, changing the conditions, as you were sort of saying, Thelma. Mm -hmm. Uh, change the conditions so that fires don't get started. I mean, that's such a helpful kind of distinction. Mm. Absolutely. So what should we ca be campaigning about? And how do we know? So how are we listening to our communities? So, you know, what's it for me to do here in Birmingham? You know, I know that on the streets of Birmingham, there's whole loads of people, the homeless problem is getting worse and worse so what do, what's mine to do as a christian here in birmingham and i think that might be a different answer for jenny in jersey mm -hmm. and a different answer for thelma in london and a different answer for you all who are listening where you are what is it yours to do because we can't do everything can we, and we that's can right we that's right that's a great question to leave with so like if jesus is a political savior jesus is someone who's who saves us and shows us the way by, by in part engaging politically, then those of us who are following Jesus or exploring Jesus, we're gonna have to contend with that. So that's a question for all of us is, yeah. how does our faith in Jesus, what does that mean for us locally in, in political engagement? A great question to leave us with. Thank you, Eunice. Uh, you can watch the whole interview with Emma Hardy, MP, on our YouTube channel. Uh, the, 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 web, the website someone posted earlier are Christians in Politics. And there's actually this great podcast put out by another part of the Methodist Church called Faith in Politics. Uh, Faith in Politics, a great treasure trove of interviews with people who care about this intersection. So you can Google that and find that. And now we're going to be joined by Hannah, Hannah Brown. Welcome Hi. to the table. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you. Well, what a great day to have Hannah. She's from the JPIT team. That's a group of churches who work together for justice and peace. And Hannah is the campaigns and church engagement officer. Hannah, it's great to have you here with us today. And you're going to tell us about something called 3Generate. Now, what's all that about, Hannah? What's 3Generate? Yeah, absolutely. So 3Generate is this month. We're really excited. It is the, the, an event run by the Methodist Church that's for children and young people from across the country to come together in a big group this year is at the NEC in Birmingham it's for anyone aged 8 to 23 and it's all about connecting with each other connecting with God and exploring faith this year the theme is uh, is called in tune how can we be in tune with God how can we be in tune with the world just as, as we've been talking about already on the episode and then finding ways to respond to that to where we feel God is leading us. Uh, there's a real packed program with loads of different venues and artists, a chapel, a wellbeing centre, arts and crafts. Um, it's going to wow. be amazing. And there, there are still wow. chances to sign up as well. And you wow. don't have to be a Methodist to go, do you? You can, nope. you can be anybody. Yeah, anybody is welcome. Uh, groups between eight and 23, aged eight and 23, and, they, and they're youth leaders as well. You can come along as well. We'll let you in. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's going to be a brilliant time. Wow, that sounds fabulous, Hannah. And Hannah, we know, uh, we've been talking about faith and politics today, and we know that you're really passionate about that. And how does what, how does that look at 3Gen? What does that mean, faith and politics at 3Generate? Yeah, so I'm really excited to be leading the town hall venue this year at 3Generate, um, which is a space where we're going to explore how everybody can be a change maker, how everybody can do that work that Emma was talking about, about going up um, the stream and finding out what the problems are and being a power for change in those spaces. And we really want to get across that everybody is a change maker. Everybody has the power to be a change maker. So uh, the town hall is going to be a space where you can come and talk about ideas, what's on your heart, what issues are in your local community, but also where you can get upskilled, where you can come and leave with more tools to go home to do that work locally. So we're going to be talking about climate change. We're going to be talking about refugees and asylum seekers, about poverty and inequality and anything else that young people bring and say this is a this is a justice issue for me. This is an issue that needs change. Um, so we're really excited to be doing that this year. 
That's fabulous. That's been a real theme of our program today, hasn't it? Yeah. Jenny's talked about it. Thelma Trey. How can we be change makers? I, I love that. What's mm. it for us to do? So, Hannah, for folks listening, if you were to give them a top tip, how can we bring faith and politics together? What sort of things might you suggest to people? I think um, my number one, and maybe that's because I'm feeling called to it more at the moment, is is to be brave. Um, mm. It's it's not easy to to bring your faith into your political spaces, whatever they might look like, or to bring your politics into your faith spaces. Sometimes that can feel even harder. So how can we be brave and and bold in how we're stepping out to to bring those things together? Um, I mean, most most of our bravery comes from from God. We don't do it in our own strength. How do we? Um, rest on god as we do that and be and be brave as we take that action but but really trusting that it will make a difference for, for good it's wonderful to see all these folks saying amen hands up uh, yeah. all we can which is the methodist relief and development agency saying they're also going to be at three gen they care about these issues too so wonderful 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 uh thanks for joining us hannah no, it's been um, great. Thanks well, for well, wonderful to have you at the table today I know, I know that there are folks around around the um, around the church and around maybe um, people who are exploring spiritually but are not part of the church for whom justice is something that um, is an aspiration, but uh, but maybe not something they lived lived into, taking a step into it. So I think your challenge for us to be brave, to be brave and take a step, is so important. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you, Hannah. Thank, thank you, Hannah. Lovely to see you. Love having Hannah. you. I feel all revved up. I'm excited. I'm, I'm good yeah. to go. Yeah. <laughs> Love that yeah. for Rev Jen. <laughs> yeah. um, it's been absolutely beautiful hearing from Emma Hardy and hearing from Hannah. Top tips being, you know, just be brave and be the change, whatever that looks like for you. We would love to hear here at Hope and Anchor how we can help you to be the change wherever you are. You can drop us an email at hopeandanchor at themethodistchurch.org.uk, which is currently on the screen, or engage with us on social media using our hashtag hashtag hope and anchor would also love to hear about any projects or cool guests that you just think would really work at our table who do you want us to call over who do you want us yeah. to have drinks with let us know and we're welcome to making new friends and meeting new people at this pub <laughs> um maybe they'll pay for a round who knows um but we would love to hear from you we would really love to hear from you so yeah see you next wonderful week. Every, every week we finish by praying together. You may be someone who prays or doesn't pray normally, but you're so welcome to join us and just give it a try if it's new for you. We'd also love to hear what you need prayer for, what you're praying for, what you're hoping for. Do pop it in the chat and we want to know how can we pray for you. Friends around the table, what's something that you want to remember in, in prayer this week? What's, what's, what's going on for you? What's going on for you, Trey? Gosh, I'm just young people on my mind, uh, maybe because of the three generate, because of seeing young people who are so concerned about global warming and how that leads them into faith and leads them into justice. So young people who are finding the courage to take a step, that's, I want to, I want to, I want to lift them up and support them in prayer. Amazing. How about you, Eunice? Jenny, I'm really worried about the, the six million people on universal credit who are going to have twenty pounds taken off. It doesn't sound mm. like a lot, does mm. it? But oh, it's going it to make is. Yeah. devastating impact. Yeah. It's a lifeline for people, and we've been campaigning. And I'm really, I want to pray that somehow mm. God would move our hearts for those people. Yeah. Yes, Thelma, Thelma. Quite similar to Trey, actually, just hearing Hannah speak about three generate, I'm just praying for all those young people to be brave. It's really hard sometimes in the spaces of university and education to be bold about your faith. Um, and I would love prayer for that and for all the young people who are in those spaces right now. I think for me, after hearing Emma Hardy, I want to pray for any woman who's in politics mm. or thinking about being in politics and particularly praying for the women in Afghanistan. <laughs> because mm. they're still that whole situation is still really breaking my heart uh so that for me that's that's what's really really on my heart right now mm. we're going to join together in a prayer which comes to us from the 12-step addiction recovery community and you're invited to name god however you do or do not understand god and if you're agnostic or atheist and you want to join in amazing but if you're not comfortable with the word god or religious language you can simply address your prayer to whom it may concern or channel that inner power to which you submit to the prayer is going to come up on the slide and we're going to pray together and Eunice is going to voice it for us today. God, give us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. 
And let everybody say amen. 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 Friends, it's been so great to have you around the table, Eunice and Rev Jen and Thelma and all y'all watching and engaging out there in the world. Um, come back next week. Share this on social media. Between now and next week, there will be a BSL translation available later this week. It's a great conversation starter with groups in your faith community, with your friends at the actual pub. Uh, see what happens when you talk about real things and, and uh, buy someone a pint. And it'll help them uh, talk about those things. Um, next week, you'll want to join us because in addition to the folks around the table here, we've got two special guests, one in Judith Parr, who is an outreach worker in Northwest Cumbria, and also Isaac Simmons, also known as Miss Penny Cost, who is a Jesus-loving drag queen evangelist. Y'all are not going to want to miss it. See you next week, 1245. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.